Up here, please. When did these letters start coming? About two months ago. Now let your eyes follow the light. Up until then, you've never heard of this girl? No. As far as I can remember. I'm going to move the light towards you. Tell me when it goes out of focus. Now. You saw two lights? Yes. Wasn't I supposed to? <laughs> Perfectly normal reaction. We can get dressed now. We'll have to wait for the lab reports, but I dare say there's nothing very much wrong with you physically. You mean there's something wrong with me mentally? I didn't say that. You're tired and run down, but that seems to be an occupational disease with you film people. I don't think it's as simple as that. But suppose you tell me the rest of it. First, I... I want to ask you a question, Doctor. And I want a straight answer. Is it possible for a person to have, well, like, like two selves, with one of them not knowing what the other self does? Dual personality? Oh, yes, as a medical fact, but rather rare. And hardly likely in your case, if that's what you're driving at. Well, I'm not so sure. Well, let's start a little further back. How long have you been in this country? Three years. And before that, you were in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. yeah, I was a cutter there, uh, a film editor. How did you come to England? Well, there was a little trouble, a scandal, I suppose you'd call it. A married woman. Is that so unusual in your business? Well, in this case, it happened to be my boss's wife. I see. First, I went to New York. I thought of going into the theater, but uh, out of pictures, I was like a duck out of water. So I decided to try my luck over here. Big Ben, that's my father-in-law, Mr. Case, Gave me a job editing at Commonwealth. From film editor to an executive. Isn't that quite a jump? Well, I've always wanted to produce, and uh, about a year ago, Ben let me try my hand at it. It was uh, an ordinary run-of-the-mill picture, but I got the story as tight as a drum. The studio had had a bad run of pictures, and I brought them in a winner. That's when Ben gave me my big chance, the chance I'd thrown away in America. Up to then, Commonwealth had been pretty much a one-man studio, but Big Ben was getting on, and he wanted someone else to carry the ball. At least that's what I thought at the time. But right after I got my new job, I married Leslie, the boss's daughter. I suppose you think I did that for the usual reasons. Other people did. Maybe even Ben. I don't know. But it wasn't true, Doctor. I loved Leslie. I loved Leslie. Try to keep relaxed, Mr. Wilson. Not that I haven't used people in the past. Friends I cultivated, the, even the girls I made love to. Only give half your heart and keep your eye on the main chance. That's the law of the jungle that we call the picture business. But I found that there was another way of living and another reason for loving. Now that it's too late. The year after I married Leslie was just about perfect until those letters started coming. Mail for Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank you, Danny. Il n'y a pas de quoi. Oh, brushing up on my French, going over with the bank holiday. I'm not certain that accent should be exported. 
these Americans to make decisions like that. Well, how's the big project coming on? Getting bigger every day. Another year in the studio won't know itself. Oh. Every time Steve comes in, the budget on Eclipse goes up another 10,000 quid. Ben wants to know the latest figures. Hmm. Well, there's the revised sheet, but uh, tell Ben it's only an estimate. Well, Sidney March called. He wants to go over Miss Wallace's costumes with you. Uh-huh. About Miss Wallace's costumes. I tell him, uh... Tell them to leave the sketches and I'll look them over at lunch. All right. How many days retakes on the native? Production wants to know. Three. Uh, and by the way, you better cancel me out on the Queen. With retakes coming up, I'll never be able to make it by Friday. What about Mrs. Wilson? Hmm. Well, thank heavens I'm, I'm married to the one woman in the world who will understand. Yes, Miss Tyson? Oh, have her come in. It's Miss Wallace. Okay, here. Fine. Well, for God's sakes, well, so... Uh, hold it till I get rid of my props. <laughs> Same old K. You know, honey, honey, you look great. Just great. No, no. <laughs> uh, oh, now tell me about the sightseeing. My feet hurt. I have a chair, Miss Wallace. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, K, this is George Mearns. He, um, he interprets native customs for me. Is he a good student, George? Oh, he learns fast, Miss Wallace. <laughs> thanks for the car. Well, you arranged that, didn't you? And Mr. Wilson thinks of everything. Ah. Uh, honey, uh, the car and the chauffeur are yours for as long as you're here. Now, now let's hear about that trip. Well, I'm afraid it'll sound like a weather report. I went to Edinburgh. It rained. I went to Newcastle. It rained. Newcastle? Why? Oh, cousin on my mother's side. Then uh, Bristol. That was a cloudburst. And then back to London. It looks as if the game's still called. Does it ever stop? Never. Well, I must say, you uh, landed on your feet. Yeah. It's not bad, is it? They didn't know they were kicking me upstairs. Well, this time, don't throw it away. In Hollywood, you're still on the bad boys list. Yeah? How did you know? Oh, I made some inquiries before I left. If you fumble this one, I'm afraid it's fade out Reggie Wilson. Well, don't worry. I'm crazy about it over here. You always knew what you wanted. So did you. But I didn't always get it. Well, how did we uh, get on that subject? Tell me about your personal life. So far, there's been no mention of it. That thing never works. I know you're married, of course. It, it was in the trades. That's right. Oh, come on, Reggie, give. Are you really married? Well, what do you mean? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Up to about um, here. That's the head. How about the heart? All the way this time. Not that it didn't happen before, uh, at least once. That's what you call letting a girl keep her pride. But you can't make that sort of thing retroactive. Okay, I was young and I was a jerk. Well, I congratulate your wife. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, don't forget you're coming to dinner tonight. You and Leslie are going to be real great friends. Oh, <laughs> Reggie. If one of your writers put that line in a script, you'd throw him out of the studio. <laughs> well, they said they wanted me for some stills. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I haven't asked you. What do you think of the script, honey? If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be here, would I? George, you take Miss Wallace down the stove. Be delighted. Okay. I hope you believe this. But you're not just a star who's come here to do a film. You're a friend, and it means a lot to me having you here. Almost like cold times. Almost. This way, Miss Wallace. I'm going to go for the meal now, Miss Tyson. Uh, give me ten minutes. No calls. Shall I heat your coffee? Oh, no, it's all right.
Mrs. Tyson. I thought I told you to hold up. Uh huh? Of course. Put her on. Darling. I was just going to call you. Uh -huh. What you been doing? Ah, fine, fine. Gee, I, I wish I were with you. That's some bad news, darling. Retake's coming up. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone our trip until after eclipse. But never mind. We'll, we'll get there. Those tropic nights, full moon, palm trees rustling in the breeze. And this is the last postponement. I swear it to you on, on my... This long we can. Reggie? You still there? Reggie, you all right? All right. Uh, somebody just, uh, just came in. Uh, look, Leslie, uh, I'll try to get home early tonight and we'll make some new plans. How about it? Uh, that's my girl. Bye, darling. Yes, Reggie? You got a few minutes, Ben? I want to see you. It's, uh, it's a personal matter. Always have time for you. I'll be right over. Come in. Sorry to break in, Ben. Hello, Ernie. Just going over some figures. Nothing that can't wait. All right. Well, my boy, what's on your mind? Read that. She wants money. I suppose so. How much? She's never mentioned it. She will. How many of these have you had? Oh, four or five, but uh, nothing as urgent as that one. The next question is personal, and you don't have to answer it unless you want to. I want to, Ben. It's a complete fabrication. As far as I know, I never even saw the girl. Mm -hmm. What about putting the police on it? No, in your position, you're certain to get bad publicity, and they drag Leslie's name into it. Well, if I take the girl to court, she's got to be able to prove something. Keep away from the courts and this sort of thing. Juries always believe the woman. Well, what am I going to do? My advice is, for the time being, do nothing. If you're quite certain, you. Of course, I'm certain. Well, in that case, she may be just a movie-struck girl, a crank. It'll blow over. You know, it's a funny thing about these letters. They, uh, they seem to be written by someone who actually believes what she writes. Which probably means she's cleverer than most of her sort. Another reason for not coming to grips with her. Mm -hmm. I suppose you're right. One more thing. Have you told Leslie? No, should I? I would, in case she hears it some other way. Well, I'll uh, tell her tonight. Thanks, Ben. You know, I always feel better after talking something over with you. Why don't you do it more often? That's what I'm here for. Ben, if, uh, if I don't come here as often as I'd like, it's because I'm going like a crazy racehorse all day. Don't run your legs off in the first furlong, my boy. Save something for the stretch. Thanks for everything. Oh, uh, by the way, Reggie, Ernest has been going over these new figures on Eclipse with me. Yeah? We think they're getting a little out of line. Out of line with what? With what we can hope to get back. Now look, Ben. This is a big picture. With Kay Wallace's name to carry it, we're going to make a real dent in the world market. I hope you're right. Just cut a few corners in case. Mm -hmm. Ben, you never really liked Eclipse, did you? Not for 400,000 pounds worth. No, I mean, I mean, aside from that. Perhaps it's not my kind of picture, to be quite honest. No, oh, the story's good if it's kind, and as you say, it's big and showy. Showy, yes. That's what's wrong with it from my point of view. Now, this studio's made a lot of real gems in its time. But you know as well as I do that the little picture is finished. Perhaps I shouldn't have outlived it. Tomorrow, I 
start chipping away at the budget. Okay? Fine. Don't forget tonight, Ben. Leslie and I are expecting you. But why cut it, Reggie? It's one of the best scenes in the picture. Uh-huh. And one of the most expensive. Ernie, what's you down for on the budget? 10,000. Not counting music and dubbing. Money. Tell him, Dave, after all, you wrote it. I feel it is a good scene for Miss Wallace. It builds up sympathy for her. Now, look, Dave, I can tell you that the scene doesn't come off, that uh, it's badly written. But the plain, unvarnished truth is that it costs too much and we're over budget. We're spending 400,000 quid. So what's another 10? You say that every time, Steve, but the 10s add up. Now, look, I'm sticking my neck out on Eclipse as it is. The old man doesn't like the picture. He's, uh, he's afraid we won't get our money back. If you ask me, Big Ben's becoming nothing but an alarm clock. That's a nasty, ungrateful thing to say, and you ought to be ashamed. I only meant Ben could be wrong. And like Reggie, I've got my heart set on this picture, and... He's been right a lot of times in the past. He built this studio, didn't he? Everyone seems to forget that. I'm not forgetting it, Ernie. And I don't need you to remind me. You don't need me at all. You'll do what you want anyway. He forgot his briefcase. Oh, friend Ernest has been making time with the starlets. Mm. <laughs> but I have never seen him as the girl. Better he should have a wife and be married to the studio. Now, look, fellas, let, let's get back to these cuts, huh? Sorry, but you're wanted on the phone. Or can it wait? It's long distance. Okay. Uh, would you like to take it in my office? Be right back. You fellas, uh, kick it around. It's the girl. What girl? Evelyn Stewart. Reginald Wilson. Now, just a second, Miss Stewart. You're mistaken. You must have the wrong person, because, you see, I, uh, I don't know you. I tell you, I don't know you. And stop sending me those letters, or I'll have the police on you. Are you listening? Wait! Wait! And she said if she didn't hear from me by Saturday, she, uh, she'd do something desperate. Did you bring up the question of money? Well, I never had the chance. If that's what she's after, she's taking her time. Ben, she talks just the way she writes. I, I swear, she believes what she says. Maybe she's crazy. Well, I've never known that sort of woman too crazy not to want money. Well, then I wish she'd come out with it. At least I'd know where I stand. Now I feel as though I'm out in the open with somebody ready to take a pot shot at me and I don't know who or where or how. Reggie, why don't you go out and see her? No, that wouldn't be wise. Then she would have something on him. Just sit tight and wait it out. I've got enough on my mind without this. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? What? Responsibility, running the show. You can't have that without paying a prize. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. Look, you've made the kind of life you wanted. Don't try to fool yourself that you want something else. Here, have some tea. You'll feel better. Yeah, you're right. You know, talking with you is just like talking with my real father. Lemon or milk? Uh, just that way, please. You know, actually, Ben, no matter how this crazy business grinds you down, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. The way you feel certain moments that people on the outside just, just wouldn't understand. Like when you're sitting in a projection room watching the first rough cut of a film you've just sweated blood over, and you say to yourself, this one I like. I get my pleasure a little later when the audience say they like it. You know, I feel I am the audience. If I laugh, they'll laugh. If I cry, they'll cry. I felt that way once, too. But when you get a little older and you've made a few bad guesses, if you cry, they probably laugh. <laughs> I hope I turn out to be one of your good guesses, Ben. Reggie, I never asked you about that Hollywood business. It was somebody's wife, wasn't it? Yes. Where is she now? Oh, she's still there, I suppose. Why? Hmm. Did you tell Leslie about those letters? Yeah, the same night. How'd she take it? 
Oh, just as we figured. Wonderful. Just dismissed it. Well, then, you've nothing to worry about. Her mother was like that, too. You still miss her, don't you, Ben? I miss a lot of things. And that's a cue for music. Oh, Mr. Wilson, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Miss Wallace is trying to get through to you. Something about her wardrobe. Oh, don't tell me she's griping about that again. All right, I'll go down. Where is she? In her dressing room, stage seven. Uh, thanks, Ben. Maybe I ought to be real English and come have tea with you every day. Oh, whatever you wish. She's impossible, Reggie. Nothing I ever do is right. This is the third dress she's thrown back at me. What seems it for? The dinner at Ellesmere. As you remember, you approve the design yourself. The shocking pink neck with the flame. Well, you just hold it. I'll talk to her. Who is it? Me, Reggie. Oh, come in. Thought it was old Mother Goose coming back. Did he weep on your shoulder? What's wrong with the dress, Kay? It looks like a piece of bunting left over from the coronation. That's what's wrong. I selected those designs myself. Now, don't you start. Seems to me we've been having a lot of complaints lately. You don't like this, you don't like that. Well, since you brought the subject up yourself, I'll tell you something else I don't like. I don't like what you're doing to the script. I've just been reading the blue pages. You're cutting the heart out of it. The heart being a couple of your scenes. Well, if you cut any more, it'll solve the problem of what I'm to wear. Well, let's cut out the nonsense, Kane. Get down to business. Well, the big producer act. They start rolling in two weeks. I want those wardrobe tests tomorrow. When did you decide that? The conference this morning. I sorry, you're a little late. I'm afraid you'll have to wait till Monday. I promised my cousin I'd go back to Newcastle for the weekend. Newcastle? Oh, you've heard of the place, I take it. Yeah, you bet your life I've heard of it. Is this your idea of a joke, Kay, or maybe joke's too pretty a word for it? <laughs> what are you talking about? I know very well what I'm talking about. Those letters, with all my heart, and the telephone call this morning. Did you fix that up with your cousin? Is her name Evelyn, by any chance? Are you out of your mind, by any chance? That's a question I'd ask myself if I were you. Sure, I let you down once a couple of years ago, but is that any reason to stoop to a low, sneaking trick like this just to get revenge? Will you the... shut up and listen to me? I don't know anything about any letter, and I haven't the faintest idea who Evelyn is. But I do know you and whoever she is and whatever she's doing. I'll bet you've given her plenty of reason. Reason? I don't even know the girl. I never saw her in my life. Come in. Sorry, Mr. Wilson. Miss Wallace, we're ready for a take and your voice is a cat. We'll be quiet. I'm sorry to disturb. Is your lighter out of fuel? Mm. Dean! 101, please. Take one. I'm sorry. I have no right to accuse you, Kay. I, I shouldn't have done it. It's just that just everything's gone wrong today. I never seem to bring out the best in you. Yet you had to lure me over here to get your precious picture done. That was a kind of a fraud, Reggie. You were trading on an old affection. You knew you could get me if I thought there was any chance that... I was fool enough to swallow the bait. I said I was sorry, Kay. Can't, can't we leave the past alone? I'd like to, believe me. I'd like to go home. I couldn't be sued to kingdom come for breaking my contract. Will you, will you please go now? I want to study the script. I, uh, I put those uh, scenes back if, if you want me to. I don't care what you do. Just go. And it isn't any of my business, but you've got a fine wife. 
I'd stop playing around with any Evelyns if I were you, even if you can't remember their names afterwards. I'm not playing around, Kay. But I don't suppose I can ever make you believe that. At least we're, we're alone for once. Feels funny. So we were on some desert island. Well, soon we'll be on a real one. Bermuda. Yes. Uh, how about, um, how about going down right after eclipse? Uh, mm -hmm. about November? November? Tropic nights, full moon, palm trees rustling in the breeze. Well, sounded good in the travel folder. Trip children of soup. monstrosity anyway. Oh, it's not so bad. You're just in a mood. No, I'm not, baby. Well, it should be a monstrosity. That awful little man who's always around father, his wedding gift to us. Oh, Ernie? Well, Ernie's not a bad sort once you get to know him. Uh, especially if you don't call him Ernie. What's up, darling? You think maybe we're just uh, shy being alone? I am a bit foggy tonight, aren't I? Oh, it's nothing important. I'll, I'll tell you after dinner. Hmm. How are the retakes coming? Oh, not now, please. woman's letters came for me today. Where is it, Leslie? Oh, let's forget it until after dinner. Look, don't worry about spoiling my appetite. I haven't got one. You haven't had for a week. I think our honeymoon is overdue. That is, if you still intend to take it. What has this letter got to do with our honeymoon? I didn't say it had anything to do with it. It's you who's making the connection. should give him back to me where he really belongs. Of all the crazy... But she gives herself away here. She doesn't even know we're married. Oh, but she has a good follow-up. If you read a little further, she goes on to say that you married me for the sake of your career. I, I could kill her. I really could. She says I'm to try and forgive you. <laughs> she, she's even made up places we've been together. And dates. You do believe there's something in it, don't you? Well, I, uh, I looked up some of her dates, Reggie. I couldn't help myself. All of them were exactly the same dates you were away from here on business. You never let me come to the plane with you on any of your trips. I had to think of that. I couldn't keep it back, could I? Maybe you never took those flights. Maybe all the time Leslie, you were... you don't know what you're saying. I... I was only trying to spare you the tedious waiting. Spare me? Oh, Reggie, what were you trying to spare me? How many things have you tried to spare me? This is open floodgates. Now I want to know why you left Hollywood. I never cared before. There was a woman involved in that, wasn't there? That's the past. If 
father warned me that your sort of past wouldn't stay in the past. Ben said that. Oh, I shouldn't have told you. He was fond of you, Reggie, but... Well, yes, he was against my marrying you. At least until he saw I was set on it. Now, look, Leslie. You've got to trust me. I've done some rotten things in my life, maybe, but these letters are from someone I don't know. You would tell me. I swear it. I try to understand. That's not good enough. I, I want your trust. I'm going to Newcastle. I'm going to find that woman if it's the last thing I ever do. Will you come with me? It isn't necessary. I love you, Reggie. I trust you. No. Unless we go together, there might always be a doubt. And I don't want that. Not with you. There is a bird in this bush. I'm not going to touch it. So come on. Come on. What did this, uh, this, uh, Miss Evelyn Stewart live here? She has a room in my house. We'd like to see her. If you can tell us which room. Straight ahead down the hall. But she went out for a few minutes. Couldn't we come back later, Reggie? Oh, well, she's only after cigarettes. Come in. I'll take you to her room. Thank you, if you would. Oh, she'll be pleased to see you. It must be lonely for her here, the only American girl. American? Are you in the same business? Well, what business is that? Oh, you've not seen her for a long time. No. Oh, she's an actress on the telly, but she's here in repertory to get experience. This old place has seen lots of their ups and downs. They have to keep up appearances, poor dears. And it isn't easy on the money they get. Means she hasn't been doing very well. Oh, she's a pretty girl. Pretty girls get along. Oh, have a chair, Mrs. Um... Wilson. I'm Mrs. Linton, the landlady. I tried to make a good home for the girls. Has Miss Stewart lived here long? Three months. Did she ever happen to mention us? No, but she's not like the others. They tell me everything, not her. Sometimes I take a telephone message, that's all. Do you ever remember my calling her on the phone, Reginald Wilson? No. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. You're an American, aren't you? Oh, I'd have remembered your accent. Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, wait, Mrs. Linton. Uh, would you look at me, please? Carefully. Yes. Do you ever remember my being here? Are you from the police? No, no. Well, why do you ask me? Please, I have a very good reason for asking. Tell me the truth. Have you ever seen me before? No, I can't remember. Thank you, Mrs. Linton. Oh, gee, I'm not a judge. This is awful. You don't have to collect witnesses to build up your case. But that's what we came here for. Oh, I'm sorry we did. Let's leave, couldn't we? You, we should have left it to the police. Now look, darling, I know this sort of thing isn't very pleasant, but we're in it. And let's get rid of this ghost once and for all. She may not come for hours. You heard Mrs. Linton. She said she'd be right back. 
Meantime, let's see what we can pick up. All right. She's an actress, all right. Photographs all over the place. I wonder which one is hers. That lady said she's pretty. Uh, all of my amours are pretty, darling. I'm not sure that's a good joke. Here's a desk. Well, this is where she probably sits to write those heartbroken letters. I wonder if there's any sign. Find anything interesting? Oh, no, 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 just, just some old bills and things. You might have told me you were coming, especially if you were bringing your wife. Now, now look here, Miss Stewart. Miss Stewart? Really, Reggie, who do you think you're fooling? Who am I fooling? Well, at least this time you knew who I was over the phone while you pretended like you never heard of me. I hadn't. I've never seen you before in my life, and you know it. You can say that after. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilson. I don't know why he dragged you here. I don't want your sympathy. You're his wife, and I understand how you must feel, but... Well, I have some rights, too. What are your rights? Me Not that way, Reggie. It's no use. Well, what's your game? What do you want? What I want? You know very well what I want, Reggie, and it wasn't very much. He never said he'd marry me, Mrs. Wilson. I never fit into his career that way. But I, I was content with just the fringe. That much he promised me. But now... Now I don't know what he's trying to do. You lie. Every word you say is a lie. You don't believe her, Leslie. Reggie, I want to go. Don't you see? Reggie, you're only making it worse for all of us. Tell her the truth so that we can settle this and... Settle? settle. At last, it's out. Well, what's your price? If it's within reason, I'll pay anything to get rid of you. Buy me off. All right, Reggie, you win. I won't bother you again. Leslie, don't run out of me now. I've got to be one more chance. Either you tell the truth or I'll call the police. Your picture. Reggie, you've taken the only one I had. Picture? You know very well it was here, right here. Will you listen to me? Can't I be left one single thing? I swear. Oh, Reggie. Sit down, Miss Stewart. You're not under arrest and you're not charged with anything. For the record, you came here of your own accord to answer some questions. Is that clear? Yes. While you're not compelled to answer, and you are entitled to take advice of counsel, I suggest it's to your interest as well as Mr. Wilson's to clear this matter up. I have nothing to conceal, Sergeant. In that case, we'll proceed. Full name? Evelyn Stewart. Birthplace? Elmira, that's a city in New York State. How old are you, Miss Stewart? Twenty-six. Your profession is an actress? That's right. And you're employed here in Newcastle? I've been with the repertory company since April. I think I remember seeing your name on the playbills. Miss Stewart, why are you sending these letters to Mr. Wilson? 
He showed them to you? Yes, three or four of them. Sergeant, if you're in love with a person, is it strange to write him letters? It's strange to be in love with a person you don't know. He told you that. He's told you that, hasn't he? Yes. Yes, ever since... Since what? Since a few weeks ago, when I guess he wanted to break it off. I can hardly break off what was never on. Where did we ever meet before today? Just name one place. You ask me that. Miss Stewart, suppose you tell us your version of it, from the beginning. The beginning? Any background you think has bearing. But I ought to warn you, we'll check on these facts whenever we can. So I'd advise you to make them accurate. Well, I started acting in my hometown, but to make a career of it, why, well, you have to get on Broadway or go to Hollywood. I went to New York. That was three years ago. I have no idea whether you know how hard it is to get a start in the theater, but they won't give you a part until you've had professional experience. And you can't get experience until they've given you parts. So you go around in circles. Either you break the circle or it breaks you. When you go back home, well, I stuck it out. I was lonely and discouraged. That was the winner that Reggie and I met. Sergeant. Just a uh, moment, Mr. Wilson. When do you claim you met Mr. Wilson? About three years ago in New York. He had some trouble in Hollywood and had just... Is that true, Mr. Wilson? About uh, trouble? Yes. And you were in New York at the time? Yes, that was just about the time I came to England. Go on, Miss Stewart. Well, we were both down on our luck, but... Well, it was so wonderful to be in love that I didn't mind. But Reggie was unhappy being out of picture, so he decided to go to London. Well, by this time, I had a small part on Broadway, and so I was to follow soon after. Well, before it folded, I was picked for the lead in a television series they were producing in London. Well, of course, I jumped at the chance. You can check on all these things, by the way. The company was United Films, and we made 13 at Nettlefold. And you saw Mr. Wilson when you came over? Not as often as I'd expected. Where did you see me? Who saw us together? Did you ever come to my office? Why do you keep asking me that, Reggie, when you told me not to under the circumstances? What circumstances? By the time I arrived, he was married to an English girl, Sergeant. Our meetings, I'm afraid, were what you'd call clandestine. What about that, Mr. Wilson? It's true that I married an English girl, nothing else. I never saw you in New York, here, or any place else. Never in my life. Never! Sergeant. Sergeant, call up her landlady and ask her if I've ever been there before. If I've ever been in the house before tonight. That's true, Sergeant. He had his wife to think of in his position at the studio. Maybe he was getting frightened. All I know is I didn't hear from him for three weeks. Why else would I write those letters? Miss Stewart, would you wait in the next room with Constable Burton for a few minutes? Reggie, I know how mixed up you are, and, and I'm sorry. Please try to believe that. Well, Mr. Wilson, what do you think? Want to press charges? I don't know. If you have any doubt in your mind, I'd advise against it. She could make trouble for you, post arrest and all that. But, but she can't prove that I ever had anything to do with her. But can you prove that you didn't? Besides, it's a question whether writing these letters is a crime, unless you can prove a motive, like extortion. But she, you said she never tried to get money. All right, we'll, um, we'll forget about the charges. I think you're wise. In the meantime, we'll investigate her here and let you know at the studio anything we find out. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Sergeant. I'd like to ask you a question. And you'll be frank with me. You, um, you believed her story, didn't you? 
Since you ask me, I admit I don't really know what to believe. Well, it'd surprise you if I admitted that at this moment, I hardly know myself. Oh, um, Mrs. Linton, is Miss Stewart in? Oh. You're the lady who was here with her husband this morning. Yes. Miss Stewart went out about two hours ago. Oh. Uh, you don't know where? Well, she'd a telephone message and seemed in a hurry. But she didn't tell me where she was going. My husband wasn't with her. Good gracious, no. He left soon after you did. I've been waiting for him at the railway station and he didn't come. I thought perhaps Miss Stewart might know where he is. You could try the pub. Let me see. Half past five. She's usually at the Bell and Crown for a nip around this time. You could have a look there. The Bell and Crown? Down the bottom of the road, round the corner, and follow your nose. Thank you, Mrs. Lenton. Irish whiskeys, Johnny, please. Okay, Miss Stewart. Must be done with mirrors. Cigarette? Or have you changed your brand? Keep the bottle, you keep the change. Thank you, sir. Let's see, it was this much whiskey, the rest water, right? Why ask me? Well, as they say here, cheers. Beats picked up. You never wolfed your drinks. I never hated anyone as I hate you. <gasps> Careful, Reggie. That's the kind of thing a man says to a girl when he's about to make a pass at her. Well, don't worry. You're safe. Mm. Well, I wonder if you are with broken hearts strewn from here to Hollywood and back. Yours seems to be in pretty good condition. I've grown some extra layers of skin over it. 
We have a lot more in common than you think. That doesn't sound quite like the uh, heartbroken girl in those letters. I have my moods. Right now, I feel all warm and happy. Maybe it's the drinks and not me. Besides, you're looking a little less grim yourself. Evelyn, I've never seen anything like you. I've seen a lot of actresses. Reggie, you're not still going to pretend this is an act. All right, then we'll play it your way. Where will we ever together? Not, not just the city, but uh, did, did, did I ever take you to the theater, a ball game? What did we do in New York? Have you really forgotten? Someday I'll let you read my diary so you can refresh your memory. Now, would you pour me another drink before you finish the bottle? I wasn't baiting you. I really wanted to know. Reggie, can't we forget the past? At least... Well, at least we're here now and together. The past won't leave me alone. Lately, it's... It's been coming at me from all sides. Even my wife's gone. When I left you and went down to the street, she'd... She'd driven away. God knows where. I'm sorry. I expect you to believe that. I think I'd better go. I'll take you home. No, thank you. It's just around the corner. I know it is. I'll take you home. This um, street reminds me of a picture we did once. A story about a dame who is uh, blackmailing a guy. He, uh, they're putting the screws on him. Hate women that blackmail. Yeah. Uh, well, you'll be happy to know that this one uh, came to a bad ending. Did she? Yep. One night she went a little bit too far, and this this guy he up and up and killed her. Strangle it to death. Is this um, your letterbox, Evelyn? Don't you recognize it? You know, one of these days they're going to put one of those blue and white plaques on it. This is where. Come on, Reggie. We've got a nine o'clock rehearsal call. What do you want to rehearse for? You're perfect. Letter perfect. I don't think that's very funny. You don't, huh? Good night, Reggie. You're not going to leave me now. After all I've meant to you. There's a 10 o'clock train. You can still catch it if you hurry. Well, I don't want to catch it. It's not going to be so easy as all that. You get me to come all the way out here, then you'll think I'm going to turn around Good night, and... Reggie. It's been fun. Fun! So that's what you call it. But I haven't had fun enough. Not nearly enough.
won't see yesterday's rushes as soon as they come through. Lindsay's waiting for Yes, we'll decide then. Mr. Cedric, call a production meeting here for three this afternoon. Yes, Mr. Case. Oh, Mr. Wilson has been waiting some time to see you. Very well. Have him come in. You may come in now, Mr. Wilson. Then, George said you had some news from Leslie. I have. She's at home. You mean your home? In that case, I'll just run away. Wait, Reggie. You can't see her now. If you have a message for her, I'll take it home this evening. Are you trying to tell me that I can't see my own wife? Your wife came home at four this morning after driving all night. She was in rather a state. I gave her a couple of sleeping pills and sent her straight to bed. She's probably still asleep. Well, I can explain that then. I, um... Perhaps you can tell me how you happened to be in the company of Evelyn Stewart last night. Oh. Uh, how did you know that? Leslie went back to try and find you. She thought she'd acted too hastily. She saw you and the Stewart girl going into a pub. Yes? Steve? No, I can't see you today. Yes, it's definitely off. I can't go into the reasons now. You were about to explain. What's the use? The explanation will have to be very convincing. Look, Ben, I've got to see Leslie. The whole thing's crazy, but, but at least I can try to make her understand. Look at it from her point of view. Your past record is far from reassuring. Then those letters and your long pretense that you didn't even know the girl. Well, I didn't. That hasn't changed. But she obviously knew you. She had your signed photograph. And on top of that, your assignation with the girl. Oh, stop, Ben. I know how awful it sounds. How can you expect Leslie to believe anything you'd say? You mean that we're washed up? Leslie and I. That isn't for me to decide. If you want my advice, I should go away for a while, sort things out in your own mind, and then come back and face whatever has to be faced. Yeah, but I can't do that, Ben. Uh, with Eclipse coming up, I've got to be on deck to... Anything gone wrong with Eclipse? I wanted to spare you this, at least at the moment. We're not doing the picture. What? I've taken it off schedule. But you can't do that, not, not without... I'm still head of the studio, even if my authority has been somewhat nominal. And I can't approve this high budget for a picture I don't believe in. But you did approve. We've been all over that. That was when you were taking personal responsibility. In your present state, I can't advise the board of directors to let you continue that responsibility. Uh, have a think of this straight. You went to the directors and you persuaded them to fire me. Is that right? Not quite. I suggested a leave of absence until we think you're in shape to resume your duties. In the meantime, I'll take over for you. I'm going to warn you, Ben. I'm going to the board and put up a fight. I'm afraid the odds are somewhat against you. Not altogether. The studio is committed to Kay Wallace. Kay could sue us blind on a contract. Miss Wallace and I came to an understanding this morning. It seems that she's as anxious to get rid of her commitment as we are. You've, uh, you've thought of everything. Haven't you? Oh, won't it be nice to get back to California and all that sunshine and those yellow oranges growing right on the trees? Mary, stop talking like the Chamber of Commerce. Aren't you just a little homesick, Miss Wallace? Homesick? Not sure I know what home is. Wherever I'm making a picture, I guess. Come in. You look as if you'd been doubling for a ghost. I've got to talk to you. I'll go out, Mr. Wilson. Time enough later to pack these. Thanks, Mary. Kay, you can't walk out on Eclipse. After my conversation with Ben, I was under the impression Eclipse was walking out on me. I can force them to put it back on the schedule if you'll stand by me. Reggie, no good ever came of forcing people to do a picture they don't want to do. You know that. Besides, I've personal reasons for wanting to call it quits. After all, it's not as if it was the last picture in the world. It might be for me. Uh, have you forgotten? All right. You want a shoulder to weep on. Well, go ahead. Ben's easing me out of my job. 
That's not the worst of it. Leslie's left me. She's home with her father. When did all this happen? Yesterday, we went out to see Evelyn Stewart, and she stuck to her story that I was her lover. And Leslie believed her? Even the police believed her. I had him question her, but she had answers for everything. Then I did a fool thing. After we left the police, I went into a pub with her. And Leslie saw us. <whistles> I know that doesn't make any sense. But I was in a mood to find out just how far she'd go. And she was fascinating, all right. I'll say that for her. Well, we had a couple of drinks, and uh, I... Well, let's see, you might as well skip the rest. I think I can fill in the details. Kay, how can my life fall apart like this over something that I haven't done? Uh, have I done something that... I can't even remember. Sometimes it's the things we haven't done that pay us back for the things we have. There's one thing I can say. Since I've been married, I I've never even looked at another girl. Except Evelyn Stewart. Reggie, is it possible that you could have known this girl before you met Leslie? I'd remember her. Well, I have known cases where there have been quite a few amours and one got lost in the shuffle. I swear I never even saw this girl until yesterday. Unless... Okay. Do you suppose there could be something wrong with me with... with my mind or something? Now, don't go making it worse than it is. Oh, but it's the only explanation that makes any sense. Either I'm crazy or... or everybody else is... Reggie, now stop it. Stop it and listen to me. You're fagged out and you're in no condition to think clearly about anything. Now, look, I got the name of a very good doctor. You're going to see him just as soon as I can. Well, then she called you and made this appointment that... At first, I didn't want to come, but then I thought, well... What could you lose? That's right. And that's all? Well, there's just one thing more. I usually keep a, an extra suit at the office in case I have to make a hurried trip someplace, like, like uh, Paris or New York. And... Well, yesterday I found these in the pocket of that suit. Newcastle. I've checked them. They're for space on the Flying Scot. Space you never used. Unless I, unless I used this space and then I forgot about it. Doctor, you've got to help me. If I'm not crazy now, I soon will be. Mr. Wilson, I'm a medical doctor. And this really isn't in my field. And I'm going to have a neurologist whom I know have a look at you. Don't be too alarmed about your mental condition. I believe in checking all possibilities. Drink this, it'll quiet your nerves. But what am I going to do? I, I can't, I can't work, I can't... I think your father-in-law gave you some excellent advice. After the checkup, we'll send you away for a while. Get your mind on something else. Time has a way of solving nine-tenths of our problems. What about Leslie? I'll have a word with your wife. Well, they're uh, giving me leave. The month be all right? Not long enough. My advice is four to six months. I can't! You don't know this industry. If I left for that long, I couldn't be sure of my job. What else have I got left? Your life? Time. This will all blow over. Yeah, sure, in a thousand years, when uh, we're all dead. Mr. Wilson, you feeling all right? I'm all right. Well, I'll send off anything you forget, so don't worry about it. Hmm. She forgives me.
Yes, Mr. Wilson? Is Ben there, Miss Cedric? No, he's on one of the stages looking over a set. Can I give him any message, Mr. Wilson? No, no, I just wanted to uh, say goodbye. He'll be sorry to have missed you. Yes. Everybody's sorry. Stuart, I'm due at the art department to go over changes in this set. I've got a unit moving in here tomorrow. Well, I have to go back tonight, Mr. Case, and it's about something important to both of us. Then put it in a letter and send it to me. You seem to be pretty familiar with our postal service. Very funny. So that's the way you're going to play it. Innocent. Young lady, have you come here to threaten me? Well, I had hoped we could have a frank talk, but it seems I've got to spell everything out. I'm certainly not going to write it in a letter, and I shouldn't have to tell you why. Miss Stewart, if you're not out of here in 30 seconds, I'm going to call the police. I wouldn't if I were you. We might both land in adjoining cells. I think you're out of your mind. Well, it could be that you're out of yours. Or have you forgotten about me and Reggie Wilson? Of course I know about you and Mr. Wilson, but that's no longer any concern of mine. He's leaving the studio today. He's probably left by now. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Really, Mr. Case, you ought to be a little more grateful. Miss Stewart, what is it you want of me? Well, that's more like it. Say, you could really believe that a battle has been fought here. What picture is this? Will you please go? You haven't got a part in it for a talented brunette, blue eyes, 5'3". It's all cast. Oh. Too bad. Well, never mind. I can wait. So long as you don't forget that I've been promised a job as soon as one comes up. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Who offered you a job? Ernest Chappell. Who else? He paid me the money, but... Mr. Chappell is my assistant, but he has no authority to offer anyone a job without consulting me. Mr. Case, let's stop pretending, shall we? Right from the start, I suspected you were behind this thing. It was your studio and your daughter, Mr. Wilson, was married to. You... Then one day, your friend Ernest rang you from a pub in Newcastle, remember? Well, I just happened to be in the booth next to him and overheard what he told you. He rang to tell me that my son-in-law was involved with you. Well, he ought to know, since he was the one that did the involving. What? Now, you're not going to try and tell me that you didn't know that the whole affair between your son-in-law and me was cooked up to get rid of him? You're lying. You're not very Not this little. time, Mr. Case. 
I've done some pretty fancy lying for you these past few months. But I can still tell the truth when it suits me. That's good to know, because you're going to have to tell quite a lot of it. Under oath. Both of you. Reggie, I thought you'd... Left? I almost had. If I hadn't happened to see a familiar face from my window. What's the matter, honey? Aren't you glad to see your old lover? I can explain everything, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure you can. The last few minutes you've been doing real well. This time, the police will really be interested. I understand how you must feel, Mr. Wilson, but are you sure you want this kind of publicity? Yes, I am. I'm glad you called me Mr. Wilson, because if you'd said Reggie, I might not have been able to keep my hands off you. You didn't keep your hands off me, Mr. Wilson, or your lips. Remember that when you prefer charges. I'll remember. And you, Ben. You've been as close to me as a real father. It's, it's as though my own father tried to kill me. You're not going to believe this girl after all the lies she's told? Some of them were pretty good lies. She knew things about me she couldn't possibly find out by herself. If you let me go, Mr. Wilson, I promise... I, I don't won't... care about your promises. I've never laid eyes on this girl until today. You didn't have to see her as long as you had Ernie to do your dirty work. Don't you dare accuse me. And why was Ernie in Newcastle? He called you from there. I heard you admit it. Well, he went out to find out about this girl. And you were pretty quick to believe what he found out, weren't you? Why not? It all fitted in. Those letters and all I knew of your past. And then Leslie herself confirmed it. I still want to know why Ernie was prying into my private life. And who put him up to it? All right. I'll tell you. I did. That's what I thought. Some time ago, I had him track you on your journeys out of town. You had him spy on me, Ben. Why? What right did you have? To protect Leslie. I didn't believe you were a proper husband for her. It's a fine way to protect her, by breaking her heart. You wanted me out of the way, and you dreamt up this pack of lies as a pretext. Now I'll tell you something. You had this girl come here today to throw me off the track to save your own skin. That's what you want to believe. Quite a coincidence you're turning up just at the right moment. In my opinion, a little too carefully rehearsed. All right, Ben. Let's find out who's telling the truth. Where's Ernie? He's supervising some dubbing on stage seven, and I'm not going to disturb him. Oh, this. yes, you are. You're going with me, and so is that girl. I want to see Ernie's face when he... Well, I'll come at the front gate. A tub, it's Mr. Wilson. Look, put some extra men on all the gates. I'm looking for a girl named Evelyn Stewart. Now, don't let her get through. She's about five foot three, dark hair, wearing a black dress and uh, carrying a light raincoat. I say. Hurry up, will you? We haven't got all day. We're ready now, Mr. Chapel. Okay, but this time let's get it right. Watch the screen closely, Rodney. You'll be coming in too soon. We've got to circle. Come out or we fire. We've got to circle. Come out or we fire. We've got to circle. 
enough. Enough. That's all for now. Break for lunch. It's only 11.20, Mr. Shevel. I said we're breaking for lunch. Get out. Remember, everybody, back by one o'clock. You must be crazy coming here. Why couldn't you wait Turn until... Turn off these lights. I told you I'd call you as soon as Wilson left the lot. Well, he didn't leave soon enough. Kay Wallace came to see me in Newcastle, and she threatened to go to the police if I didn't let Reggie off the hook. How could she have found out? Well, she knew plenty, including some dates I made up in America. She said she was with him then, and she'd swear to it. Evelyn, you didn't tell her about me. That's all you can think about, isn't it? Saving your own hide. But it's too late now. The whole thing is out of the bag. What? I went to see Mr. Case to try and uh, sew up a job before Kay Wallace got to see his daughter. Well, Reggie must have followed me and he overheard what I said. No. No. Well, don't just stand there. You got me into this, now get me out. They'll come here. They'll come after us. Well, then think of something. There must be a way out of the back lot. They're watching all the gates. There's no other way out. Anyway, what good would it do? Then, brother, start saying your prayers, if you know any. If only you hadn't gone to Ben. Oh, stop whining. You had not even believe he was behind the whole thing, didn't you? Yes, I was doing it for Ben. This is Ben's studio. Wilson had no right to put him on the shelf. Oh, so you were only doing it for a friend. Yes, I was. Evelyn, you've got to believe me. You've got to help me convince Ben. Oh, don't hand me that stuff. You hated Reggie, and you wanted to get him out of the way. Yes, I hated him. And he was getting what he deserved. Treated me like dirt under his feet. I've uh, heard enough. Uh, I'll call the gate. Uh, oh, shut up. Listen, Reggie's a pretty decent guy. I was a fool to ever get mixed up in it. As for you, you're a scheming spy and informer. You know, I'll enjoy seeing you squirm when he finds you. Don't talk to me like that. You come here on purpose to make trouble, because you've got a crush on him. Yes, that's it. You went out with him in Newcastle. Ben told me. He was making love to you, and you fell for it like all the others. Don't tell me you're jealous. Oh, you were even getting ideas about me, weren't you? I could feel your eyes taking the hurt. You know, I bet you never had a girl in your life. You tramp, you! Come down, honey. Come down before I come up there and throw you through that glass cage. Ben! Where's Ben? Save your breath, Ernie. Your mic was open. We heard the whole thing. Come on, Ernie. Keep walking. Take that light off me! You never took it off me, did you, Ernie? Tailed me everywhere, and when you drew a blank, you rigged the whole thing. My out-of-town trips, the photograph, the sleeper stubs, it followed me everywhere. Couldn't get away from it. I thought I was going out of my... Prop girls. Everything phony. It's the story of your life, Ernie. Stay with us. 
You all right, Reggie? Where's our man, Mr. Wilson? He's back there. You go to my office and make a complete statement. My secretary will take it down. You understand? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Haven't got a match, have you? I guess I, I had Evelyn Stewart coming to me. I think we both had. Two lives, one to practice on, and the other one they could really 